Greece has been ungoverned throughout its history, but the last three decades with the elites of PASOK and New Democracy in power have been especially catastrophic for the country. PASOK and New Democracy have transformed Greece in a European region where the creation of wealth is nearly a crime. And it is so because of the regulations they've created, the regulatory tangle these parties have created, strangle business opportunities to thrive and create wealth for consumers, and also because the tax hell these parties have established to finance a clearly oversight state snatches Greek citizens most of their income. But if recent decades have been a disaster, the last six months will enter the Guinness record of nonsense. Syria's administration has worsened what it was very difficult to worsen. This is the terrible and corrupt management of New Democracy and PASOK. New data was revealed on the 3rd of August about the Greek manufacturing activity in July. This data already collect the effects of the Corralito, the freezing of bank deposits, that Syria imposed a month ago. And the data are truly dramatic. In the graph of PMI, which measures manufacturing activity, we can clearly see the biggest crash in Greek history in terms of industrial activity. It is a collapse of such magnitude that can only be properly understood if we understand what PMI means. PMI collects the business people answer to a very simple question. Is your business situation better, worse, or equal to last month? If the situation is better, the answer is 1. If it is the same, we give 0 0.5. And if it is worse, we give a zero. Therefore, what does this mean? The Greek PMI has reached a figure of 30, which is absolutely dramatic. This basically would mean that the 60% of the Greek business community perceives that the situation has not changed compared to the previous month, but 40% believe they are significantly worse. This situation in which 40% of the economy can see that they are dramatically worse off after a month shows the disaster in which Greece is sunk. We can actually see in the graph the PMI correlates quite well with these green stripes which are basically the GDP. The blue line is the PMI and the green stripes are the GDP. If we maintain this correlation, a historic fall of Greek PMI would indicate that the Greek GDP may have fallen in recent months around 10%. Therefore, it is true that the management of the crisis by PESOK and New Democracy, and even the Troika itself, which didn't want to accept the Greek bankruptcy when it had to, rather than rescue these wasteful and patronage Hellenic bureaucracies, has been disastrous. Uh, Greek GDP has fallen more than 20%. But in these last six months, when the activity was starting to overcome, as we see here, the Syriza has plunged the economy by more than 10%. That is, what the other parties achieved in five years, uh, seeing the Greek economy at 20%, Syriza in six months has emulated half the damage. So, what is the cause of this huge collapse? Mm, basically, mm, the corralito. The corralito means destroying the economy straight away. Any modern economy depends on a well-functioning payment system. The banking system articulates the payment system. If you destroy your bank system, you destroy the payment system and therefore you destroy the real economy. If the shops and businesses are unable to sell because people cannot pay, this business's orders obviously fall to zero, and then production also drops to zero. And this is what the PMI is reflecting, the collapse of the manufacturing activity. Why does the Corralito impede people to pay? Um, we heard that the Greeks could take some money from ATMs every day, but this is not the real problem. The businesses which are really suffering are not the typical little neighborhood shops where we pay in cash. 
but cyclical industries such as automobiles or electrical appliances. These companies usually sell on credit. There are, of course, people who purchase a vehicle in cash, but most people buy going into debt. Let's now imagine the situation of these businesses with a corralito in place. This means that banks are unable to extend credit to finance the purchase of any vehicle, and thus all those car sales depending on bank credit have absolutely sunk during this period. That is obviously destroying the economy, the division of labor and the possibility of having well-functioning companies because you have ruined the bank system. There are many who say that the responsibility of setting up the Corralito in Greece is not Syriza but the ECBs, which unjustifiably punished Syriza by cutting off funding when they called the referendum. But actually, it is entirely Syriza's fault. Greece has been, since 2012, under the umbrella of the Second Troika bailout. Outside that umbrella, Greece is not solvent. It is a state that without the extraordinarily cheap financing that the European partners learned to it, would have failed, and in fact it should have failed. So, when a country, for whatever reason, gets out of that umbrella that lets you say you are solvent, and the government of Syriza led its country out of the protective umbrella of the second bailout when leaving the bargaining table and saying it would hold a referendum that went beyond the deadline, the 30th of June, uh, to continue within that umbrella. When Syriza makes that unilateral decision, you've obviously left the umbrella, and if you're out of it, you are not solvent. Greece is not a solvent country by itself, as evidenced by the fact that it cannot be financed in the markets. What happens if the Greek government is not solvent? Greek banks uh, have significant amounts of Greek public debt. They have invested significant amounts of their capital in public debt. Then, if the government is not solvent because it is not capable of paying its debt, the banks won't be solvent either. So, what happens if a bank is not solvent? If a bank is not solvent, it cannot borrow money from the ECB as indicated by the rules of the emergency liquidity assistance, as we can see here, which states that the ECB may provide funding to any bank that is going through a delicate liquidity situation. But the essential condition of that credit is that it has to be given to a solvent financial institution. And Greek banks were not such, because the Greek state was not solvent, and the Greek state was not solvent because Syriza left unilaterally the bargaining table and the umbrella of the second Troika bailout. Outside that umbrella, the state was not solvent, nor were the banks, and therefore they could not ask for ECB's financing having to declare therefore a corralito that was what made the economy crash. Therefore, the responsibility for the horrible macroeconomic management in the last six months that has sunk the Greek economy in a record pace that not even the disastrous management of new democracy and PSOC can match is entirely serious. It is entirely due to the crooked and erratic interventionism performed by this coalition that arose as a renovation of the old political class and has actually become a new political elite that has worsened what was already very difficult to worsen.